Hello everyone, this is Gamer, and welcome back to Vampire. Let's continue with the last update, shall we? There is a lot of sick people in this hospital all of a sudden, including the doctors. So something is going on here. Oh my god, my eyes. Mm. See? Look at this. Fatigue. Everyone's a lot of people are suffering this fatigue going on. Except for him, he needs Aminia. Ooh, fatigue. Fatigue. A lot of fatigue going on. Doctor. Wait, I am the doctor. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> You, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea. But my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. Uh, I wouldn't call this a kit. Your words bring comfort. I'm a living paradox. There is an absurd poetry to my situation. Physician, heal thyself. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. This is not amusing. We need each other. No need to apologize. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Talk to the hospital event factor. Hmm. Okay. Ah. Oh, okay. It's another new hint, huh? Warning letter. Rare species of vampires. 
call Alcon? Econ? Unveiling the night. Hmm. Any other files here? No? Okay. Nice. Nothing. Healthy. Fatigue. Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Soldier, do you need assistance? Not really. I think you caught something in this bloody hospital. I swear I'm dead. Yeah, smiling inside, Dr. Reed. Hmm. Give medicine. As long as you remain here, I will make sure you don't have to worry about your health. Don't think you can do much about it. Damage is done. Okay, he's recovering good. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Damn. The pain. I cannot enter. Mm. Fatigue. Dr. Ackroyd, huh? Will this shift never end? Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Mm. Is there anything else that's bothering you? Can I help in any way? Really? Why has no one else asked me that since I got here? I thought I was in a hospital. Huh. <laughs> Unfortunately, you are not the only person who needs help. And complaining about it won't do you any good. Well, perhaps you're right, Dr. Reed. I'm sure if me missus was still alive, she wouldn't be happy with me going on like this. No, she won't. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. I will not let you down, my boy. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. Sick too, huh? Doctor, you always knew the words to calm the children. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I had to take a phone call. And I'm back, so let's do this. We need to make more fatigue solutions because I think there's still more sick people in this hospital, right? Let's see. Oh my goodness. Okay. Re mm, sick. Recovering. Sick. Recovering. Sick. 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 And sick. Oh boy. Okay. We're not going to be doing much this episode besides healing people here. <laughs> it's locked. Of course it's locked. Of course. Hmm. Okay. Crafting, yes. I don't need that. No, no. Uh. Oh, I already got one. <clears throat> I got one for that. I need to find the guy, though. 
Good. I need more quinine, though. Whee! It's locked, all right. Hmm. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Do you require medical attention as well, Mrs. Goswick? Do you know you're the only one who's asked me this? No. I don't feel well, actually. Fatigue. Despite what you think about this place, I can tell you with absolute certainty, taking this will help you recover. Well, at least your reputation seems well deserved. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for this hospital. Sorry if you heard some noise. I was drinking something because I was thirsty. <laughs> okay, recovering. Good. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Okay, recovering. Healthy. Unknown. Hey, Doc. Oh, boy. Your health. You're lucky to be alive, Mr. Cox. I hope you're starting to take better care of yourself. This place is full of sickness and decay. How could I get better in such a dump? Consider yourself lucky that I'm treating all of my patients equally. But don't push your luck. Don't play the innocent with me. I'm sure you have good reasons to act this way. And also weaknesses that can be exploited. Recovering. Good. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Cox. You're welcome, by the way. Opium. took my dear wife Emily I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again <laughs> Mr. Rainfield that's no way to talk you're in good hands here and we'll be up again soon enough <laughs> now do me a kindness and get some sleep I'll be back round later your words are kind the blessings of an angel you're the sweet sweet lady of mercy Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. I feel played. Swansea fancies vampire. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Apologies. You've taken me by surprise. I'm very happy to see you. The pleasure is mine, Doctor. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My 
cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Patients giving you trouble? I have questions about vampires. I'm here to help you. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Please continue. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion. But I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. All right, deal. I hope you can answer every single one when I get back. I am in love with this violin right now. If that's the violin. Or is, that the, or is that the cello? This door opened now. Okay. Hmm. Garden... Royal Garden Hall Theater. Clyde Finch presents Doris Fletcher, Sappho. Small bag of junk. What? What? What is this? Who are you? Get out of my room. There's no need for alarm, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? Please calm down. Please calm down, madam. I assure you that I am highly qualified. I'm just back from war duty. <laughs> how brave. Threatening an old defenseless woman. You know how long I've been a patient here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Oh, better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of blackmail? Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. One of those incompetent cunts lit a poor sod's vein. Oh, aren't are you the blackmailer? You like gossip, not about medical error. I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigan's whores, all of them. They can't keep their legs shut. I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof. I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. But I swear one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. Hmm. Alright, let's find all the nurses. 
The patients and staff might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. Really? Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with our old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. No matter how you feel about her, Miss Jones deserves our help. Who says I don't care for her? Hate is what keeps that old crone alive. She could have been telling the truth about the mysterious man. That old witch will end up in hell soon enough. Who cares if a nurse finds some happiness where she can? Well, that went nowhere. Milton cheats patients out of their money at this hospital, Pippa. Are you his accomplice? Yes, I am. Is this your definition of being useful? By abusing the sick and poor? No. It is my definition of getting out of this useless life once and for all. Why'd you do it? Why do you do it? Why not? Most of the sick who paid for a bed are already dead. Or will be soon. Don't you see the futility of all this? You put you put a price on hope. Cynicism can will not save you. Who is the real you? How can you be affected by the misery around you and be so heartless at the same time? Which is the real you, Nurse Hawkins? I could ask you the same question, Dr. Reed. Are you more real when you lie to a dying patient or when you grant in useless medication? Well, shit, I can't argue against that. Whose idea was it? What difference does it make? We did it together, and I'm guilty as charged. Answer my question. It was my idea first, even though Milton would say it was his to protect me. Hmm. Pepper, I know you're very close to Milton Hooks. Yes, Milton Hooks is my man. If you want to report me for that, just feel free, Doctor. I have no intention of reporting you, Nurse Hawkins. But are you aware of the risks? The rules say I won't be allowed to work as a nurse anymore. But here at the Pembroke, we break rules all the time. Is he worth the risk? Hey, I'm no perfect woman, and Milton is not the finest bloke. But we do our best to get by. That's all any of us can hope for nowadays. Hmm. What can you tell me? Let me guess. Still nothing, huh? Goodbye, nurse. All right. Next nurse. Either Gwyneth or Dorothy. There she is. Good evening, nurse Brannigan. Good evening, doctor. Why are you looking at me like that? That's weird. Do you know if any of the hospital... The people who work here all come from very different backgrounds, Doctor. Just like the patients. Sorry, let me repeat that again. Do you know if any of the hospital staff have criminal backgrounds? The people who work here all come from very different backgrounds, Doctor. Just like the patients. Alright, now let's get to the real business. Have you seen a strange man visiting any of the nurses here? I've never heard of such a thing, Doctor. Really? Really? Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. I feel like... I feel like Nurse Gwyneth was lying on that part. It feels like it.
find Dorothy in the area. Mmm. Where are you, Dorothy? You're hiding. Eavesdrop. Activate your senses. You're sure you don't come back with me? Nah. I ought to see someone at the hospital. Be careful. You look so bad they may keep you as a patient. Fuck them. I don't like hospitals. Or doctors. Well then. When you go back to Whitechapel... You may find this useful. What is it? A pass for a free medical exam by the best nurse available. Just read it. I don't read well, but thank you, I guess. Nice. Retrieve the thug in the sewers. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go out and get this thing back, and then we're gonna expose expose Dorothy. Hope she turns evil. Then I have an excuse to feed on her blood. I don't want to die here. I want to see the sky, the fresh air. He's locked the door behind him. Well, I then. need to find another way to follow him. I have to take the alternate route. Great. It already sounds terrible in there. Oh, more stuff. Great, more blood. This man has been savagely attacked and dragged to the floor. Woo! Door's been unlocked. Good. Alright. Common thing. Common Bob Barbed Cudgel. Whispers. Oh, pretty good weapon. But I still like my DLC weapon.
Claustrophobia. Save the panicky man. Nope. That's the outside area. Hello. Nice. Are you injured, sir? Help me get out of here. I need to get out. I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd be glad to help you, but you must calm down first. Please, take a deep breath and tell me your name. Okay. Okay, I I I'm Oswald Thatcher. Please, I need to get out. Mr. Thatcher, your friend Newton sent me to help you. Do you remember him? Yes. Yes, I do. Good. Now leave this place and enjoy the cool night air. It's quite invigorating. I'm sure you'll feel better if you do. Ooh, headache. Ah. Nah. I'll leave him alone. He deserves to live. I do need to find a cure for his headache, though. Um. Uh, no. 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 Yes. Uh. No. Mm -mm. No. No. Okay, just do this side quest. Not side quest, but the main thing for now. <laughs> Dang, that was quick. I have this first for for blood. The Ban of the Dragon. Okay, the Brotherhood. Okay. Blood. This is despicable. Nah. Could be worse. Nice. This looks like a boss battle. Yeah, I knew it. What sort of creature is this? Bite it. Whoa. Bite the sucker. Woo. Okay.
get him. Whoa. His ass is out. That ass. Here's what's left of him. Not a lot to check, but I should anyway. If you're sick, if you have no money, whoever you are, wherever you're from, come see Doherty to get help. No tricks, no charges, no questions asked. Just find Darius Perkins' house and present this coupon. And the rest is in, uh, looks like Latin. It's the same thing, but in Latin. Some voucher for a free checkup in Whitechapel. What is Nurse Crane up to? I really must find her. Black Mill and Whitechapel. Reach Whitechapel. Rest to evolve. Screenshot for research. <laughs> More rats. I have this thirst for blood. This is despicable. Nah, it's good. Reach White Chapel. Holy cow, that's far. At least there's a hideout nearby. I'm not gonna do that now. Gonna have to figure out how to heal everyone in this dang hospital. Where am I? Oh, I'm far away from the hospital. Well, not that far. At least the door is open. Stable. Fatigue. Hoping no one saw that. <laughs> I gotta make so much fatigue things. Let's just do it. And one for someone who, who has a headache. But I don't have that treatment yet. There we go. And I need to rest. Cool. Old 
ultimate. Okay, uh... Increase my health. Let's go by... yeah. Nice. Level 10 required. Fair enough. Okay, uh, bite. Hmm. Increase your blood capacity. Hmm. Claws. Oh, I can't do it. He's a kitchen prey. Let's do this. Cool. Hmm. Nope. Hard biting. Oh, not enough. How disappointing. Perfect. Is that it? Is that all I can do? It looks like it. Yeah, looks about it. The following night. Good. It's a little better than before. Cold. Fatigue. Fatigue. Cold. Headache. Fatigue. Fatigue. I still gotta heal these people. Cold. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Do you need medical help yourself, Nurse? I'm afraid I've contracted some illness, Dr. Reed. Not under my watch, Nurse. Take this. You'll feel better. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Long letter. Huh. Okay. For Miss Hawkins. You know, Miss Hawkins, let's have a talk. Since I healed you. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Pepper, are you sure you want to leave this hospital? To become a nurse was a little girl's dream. But in the end, I don't feel that useful. I want more. 
I want to make things change. You should be proud of what you've achieved. This hospital represents hope for many people in need of help. Maybe you're right, but at the moment, I feel like we're just a cemetery waiting room. Ah, you want to be more useful? What steps are you prepared to take to feel more useful? I don't know yet. My sister believes that the real fight is in the streets nowadays. Maybe she's right. Maybe this is what I must do. And what about Milton Hooks? Does he share your point of view? For Milton, any change means more comfort and more peace. I disagree. If you feel that saving lives is not useful enough, perhaps it means that you've lost faith. On the contrary, my faith has never been stronger. Maybe we are all just too proud to face up to the fact that science cannot compete with God. Ah, uh, okay. What step? I don't know you. Pepper. To become a. You should be. Pr Maybe you're right. That's everything, huh? Goodbye, Nassau. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Do you need my assistance? Don't be ridiculous. I'm capable of dealing with this myself. I've just not taken the time to do so. Then you are lucky that I have taken the time to do so. Consider it a gesture of solidarity between professionals. I wish this hospital could have received as much attention from you, Dr. Reed. We do not see you in surgery very often. Huh. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Alright, who else is who else needs to get healed here? No. Yes, let's see. Uh recovering. Oh. I need to take care of the head. I have nothing for headaches because I don't know what cure I have for headaches. Uh I can heal you. Heal you, heal you, recovering. Okay. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives? Yes. Do you need any medical help, Milton? I'm afraid I do. Like everyone in this hospital. It's a sad state of affairs when even the hospital workers are worried about disease. Our job brings us into contact with all kinds of infections, Milton. There's no shame in being ill while you're in the hospital. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. I get the feeling you don't fall sick often. But thanks, anyway. Yeah, I'm kind of the same thing. I rarely get sick. I only get like once in a blue moon. I don't know if that's weird or anything. Goodbye, Milton. Fatigue. Good evening, Miss Brandy. Good evening, Doctor. Do you require medical assistance, Nurse? I will be fine. As soon as I can get some sleep. Nurse, you won't be able to help people if you're sick. Take this, and do try to get some rest. I'll try, Dr. Reed. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Right. Recovering. Recovering, recovering, recovering. 
So I just need to treat these three. Fatigue, I got cold treatment I got, but uh, headache medicine, I definitely don't have. I don't know where the um, recipe for that is. Such a pleasure to see you again. Do you need medical attention? Well, the proximity of the dead is not the most healthy company, even if the quiet can be appreciated. Don't take too many risks with your health, Mr. Chidana. None of us are immune to this disease, and that is a good thing. Death and disease is a constant reminder of our mortality. But you have my thanks, Dr. Reed. Hippocratic Oath. Goodbye, Mr. Chidana. I guess this episode is just me being a real doctor. <laughs> The game's loading. Um, what? Hello again, Mr. Blight. I'm happy to see Mr. Thatcher is safe for now. I'm eternally grateful, Doctor. We were total strangers and you helped us anyway. Can't thank you enough, sir. That was weird. Do you need medical attention, sir? Afraid so. In the war. I was always worried about picking up something, getting some infection. Unfortunately, I've got that fear in London now. Throughout history, some diseases have done more damage to armies than any weapon created by man. You are wise to be careful. You're working at the Pembroke Hospital, aren't you? That's a good enough reason for me and Oswald to go there. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Take care of yourself. Oswald Thatcher. Recovering, recovering, headache, recovering, recovering, recovering. Recovering. All right, good. Headache treatment. 3% loss of blood quality. Hmm. Fatigue. Serious Dorothy Crane. White Chapel. Embraced. He gained from this soul.
Oh, I had those items, didn't I? Crap. But I need to figure out what's going on with this incident. I need to reach Whitechapel. so bad. Would you like to know more? Guard the, free guard the freedom of us all. Join the Royal Fleet today. Would you like to know more? Ask at our nearest recruiting office. Join the ranks. Your king and country needs you. Join the British ranks and help the brave lads at the front line. At the front. Stay at home. Influenza. Yep. Good lord. Damn it. Tough as hell. Hmm, is this the correct way? Yeah. Whitechapel. 
This neighborhood is linked somehow to the kind Lady Ashbury's blackmail. First, let's find this Petrescu fellow. Tuh. Would you like to know more? Okay, join at once. Join the ranks. Join the army. Blah, blah, blah. Bastard at the wall next to me. I don't even know if he meant to miss. If you've been hurt, I can help you. I'm a doctor. Name's Albert. Remember it. Now bugger off. What happened? Did you really steal that man's medication? Hey, I didn't do anything. It ain't me. All right. Perhaps the poor drunk just confused you with someone else. Sod off, mister. You ain't got no clue what's going on here. Bastard was a soldier in the war, so now he's got the right to shoot me. It's true. I'm not familiar with this part of town. Perhaps you could help me. I said sod off. Go find yourself another guide. Hmm. Amnes... Amnemia. Oh. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? If you know anything about her, I'd appreciate it. Never heard of her. She's pretty, I'll keep an eye out. Uh. I found the recruiter you were expecting. He's dead, but he carried a note. The wet boot boys have accepted your application. I knew it! I told you I was tough enough. I'll be free soon. This note was found on a dead man, Albert. If that doesn't change your mind, then you must be ready to face the risks. You're all fancy words, none of which concern me. Go worry about someone else. I'm fine and I have a future here. All right. Young man. I went in the number drunk horse on the streets. Not me. Trucks from the sick and suffering. What? Shooting a boy in the middle of the street. Not the best thing to do, wouldn't you say? What? You saw what happened. H who are you? I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you promise me to set your gun aside. No. Look, I I'm not a violent man. I'm Benjamin Palmer, doctor. And no one can help me. Not even you. Are you sure about that? What can you tell me about this place? Nothing to say, really. This is where I used to live, and this is where I live now. You don't have anywhere to go. No family that would welcome you. Not since the death of my wife, Albert Smala. She was sick, you see. Long before the flu and all this shit. You mean you used to have a better life? Yeah, I had a wife, a home, and a job. I even used to have a name. And now I'm just Ben. Bend the trap. Perhaps you could focus for a moment and tell me your troubles. I'm sick, broke, and my son just stole my pills. <laughs> Everything's coming up roses. Oh. What's your... Ch you need a oh, you have a migraine. Good God. I can't fix that. I don't even have the, um... The stuff. Why did you shoot this boy? Whatever the boy did, I'm sure he didn't deserve a public execution. I swear I didn't want to hit him. It's just that I'm sick in the head, you see, and the boy just just frayed me last nerve. Tell me about the war. What is it, Benjamin? It was the war, wasn't it? Your nerves are shot, aren't they? I need some answers, Private. From one soldier to another. The doctors called me a liar. A coward. Put me in a straight jacket, lock me up. 
Finally, they sent me back to the front lines with a handful of tablets. It's a pity that doctors still practice such barbaric methods. It's a dishonor to our profession. Now only the pills stop me thinking about this shit. To not hear the explosions. I'm even scared of the dark these days. Ah. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Have you heard anything? It's funny, I've been searching for her too. I need some pills. But the woman is a phantom, if you ask me. Really? And why is that? Word is she ain't real. She's a cover for some doctor who runs an illegal dispensary for migrants. Really? Really now? A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now. Yeah. Adios. Where is my hideout? Oh, it's over there. Been proven by many. Even the flu is no match for the Swanborough Cordial. Good evening, Miss. Good evening, sir. Are you interested in a miraculous cure for this unknown and deadly epidemic? Actually, I am. Then you have come to the right place. The famous Swanborough Cordial is all you need to help keep you in perfect health. Oh, really? Why didn't I hear about it during my studies? I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Ah, my brother has spoken of your research, sir. I'm Loretta Swanborough, and it's always a pleasure to meet a fellow healer. Huh. Tell me, who intrigues you most in Whitechapel? The region itself is something to see, but I would say Camellia the mute florist who gives away her flowers. What do you think of the locals? Most of them are afraid or desperate. They all come to me eventually for my remedy. Is there anyone I should avoid? Cadogan Bates, without a doubt. The bloody bastard remorselessly exploits poor migrants as soon as they get here. Oh, dang. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like to talk about competition. Competition, you say? Never met her, but it seems she provides some sort of medical care to the poor. The whole thing has to be some sort of scam, if you ask me. Huh, really? You're healthy, nice. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling. Sell, no. Sell, no. Uh, no. No. What the heck? Can we recycle into components? Opium. Okay, uh. Sure. Benjamin Palmer. Good evening, Benjamin. Can I help you? I'm afraid not. Oh, is this guy? A gun? Is that where I need to be? I need us. You know what? Let's go in here and talk. What? What do you want? Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. 
There is no Dorothy claim here. Now, goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. Go bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Dorothy. There's no one in. Strange man was at the door with the pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be from Whitechapel. Perhaps just the friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidacott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me, just downwind. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Ah. Even by the church they just mentioned. Okay. I really need to save my game, though. I really need to, but I'm so interested in this mission that I'm not going to save. And you know what? I'll be right back. You won't miss a thing. I'll definitely be right back. And just like that, I am back. Let's do this. I am so interested in this mission now that I want to keep on going. Cheap price, good quality. Come on, take a look. Don't be afraid. Welcome, sir. Please, take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. Your life in London. How is business around here? Business? I have no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. Ah. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit. And no sign of the bottom yet. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me. Came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness. Something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Have you been hurt? Have you been hurt? No, but that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Really? Okay, uh... Personal life? Nothing? Okay. Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse, then? Always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. Yes, she's a nurse, and quite a good one. 
What did she do to gain such notoriety? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu. Something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. Ah, okay. Thanks for telling me that info. Definitely gonna need that for, uh, when we talk to her. Right then. Show me what you got. Well, I don't know what else to pick from here. Sorry. Got distracted. I heard a noise outside. It was actually a car. Um, I don't have a lot of money either, so I don't know what to choose. Gah! I don't want to buy any of this stuff. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm not buying Find Clayton in the area. Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off! I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe to most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. Well, you do have a point. But you are sick, though. Can I offer you my medical expertise, Mr. Peterson? Keep your medicines for others. There is a thin line between pride and stupidity, sir. Please, take this medication. You'll feel better. All right. I'll take it in. It's not like I don't appreciate the gesture. <laughs> your life in London. Recovering. May I ask what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. Dang. I give you medicine, that's how you treat me? According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the Wet Boot Boys, a gang from the docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. Hmm. You could have refused. Survival is a natural law. You are a criminal. Well, I'm just going to say, uh... Survival is a natural you law. You survive at any cost, even at the expense of others. Perhaps that's just the law of nature. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons. And that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by all means necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Really? Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I'll know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. Oh, well then. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. What are you doing, sir? Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. 
I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. Oh, Lord. Please don't bring religion into this. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? Yeah. All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. Well, you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. You know what? Let's be open-minded and hear him out for a little bit. As much as we're on the scientific side, let's be open-minded here. Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your so-called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of a decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu is just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. With my own eyes I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. What is your plan? Really? And what would be your answer to this biblical threat? We must fight the disease before this legion outnumbers us. But not with scalpels and microscopes. No. What is left then? Cleansing fire. Uh... What do you mean when you say that I am... All signs. Quite a job. Are you... Well, As a dog, what do you mean? The beast. Really? We must what is left? Tell me, Tobias. What exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. But where do you put the limit? Science is our only hope. This is the 12th century. <laughs> Purification by fire has proved useful, but where do you stop? Burn the clothes? The buildings? The corpses? Worse? Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad. And dangerous. You're nothing but a soulless butcher. A small-time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. My son, if you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool? Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. Huh. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. You don't like nurses? So you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have the necessary moral fiber. Huh. Interesting. Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. When you let her get a woman involved in politics. Okay. Well, this is the 1920s. Males were pretty sexist back then, weren't they? Yeah. Have you any family left? Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I send him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupting city. Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery. 
where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of, of death. death. Yeah, we get it. Is that it? I have heard enough for tonight. Goodbye. Yeah. He's somewhere around here. He's he's over here somewhere. Oh boy, I I'll, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I take a very important phone call, but let's do this. Let's find Clayton. The wars of men should not be your main concern. The disease upon us is not an accident of nature. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Oh, Mr. Darby. Oh, you need checkup, sir. Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, doctor. Who knows what I may have caught during my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Do you need assistance? Do you need assistance? Save your time for the people who need you here, Doctor. Oh, he's recovering. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. Duh! Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? That science is unable to explain the facts doesn't mean there is no rational explanation. I confess, I share your point of view, Doctor. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Ah, okay. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Hmm. Personal questions. Nothing? Okay. All right, let's get to the main thing. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm afraid one of the nurses from the Pembroke Hospital may be involved with unsavory activities. Ah! Could it be Dorothy Crane? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He never goes out. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. 
Really? He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Quarantine. Keep out of this area. By order of Board of Health, Health Officer. Find Richard in the area. Richard! Already touched by Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. Ah. You got a cold. Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. I understand your appetite for words and macabre beauty, sir. But you should be more careful. The nutrition of my mind is more important than my physical health. But I appreciate your concern, sir. Oh, good. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor. All are equal in the eyes of the flu. Hmm. That's true. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. Huh. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in the city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy but the scourge has not been all bad for the city oh no sir what are you talking about do you remember london before the flu noisy cacophonic quiet nowhere to be found and now listen to this oddly peaceful silence peaceful silence really i only see a dreadful disease quite a unique point of view peaceful that's quite an unusual way to speak about the epidemic. And very inappropriate, I must say. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Oh, that's true, yeah. 
What are your terrible... What are you talking? Do you remember? Peaceful. Most people... Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. Huh? <laughs> well, how confident are you in that answer? I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, Doctor, and my family despises me. Youch. Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir, Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Really? Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah. Uh, Will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? No, not really. In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight. The barren smiles and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox. The stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about. And that's what Whitechapel is made of. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. Dang. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. I'll leave you alone, sir. Gotta get to that mailbox. Door has been unlocked. Good. Fire bouquet. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. Huh. She won't answer. Either she's too scared to talk or... Wait. Is she deaf? Or she could be deaf. Either she's too afraid to talk or she's deaf. It's one of the two. She's super healthy. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Mm. 
Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. Oh. I can't tell if she's actually a real mute or, uh, she's deaf. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Great, she's not talking. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Hmm. Very well. Goodbye. Wait. Oh, no, I'm not done with you yet. Hello again, miss. I need one more hint. Very well. Letter. Okay. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Ah. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Who are you? Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick. Though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. Oh! Are you a prostitute? Tell me, can you please answer my questions, Christina? How about your health, Christina? Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. Dang. How can I put this in medical terms? You could get diseases in your hiney area, or in your front area. Would you like me to check it out? Would you like me to examine it? Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. Fatigue. Ooh. Girl, you need some medicine. You can put your own life in danger. That's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger, too. And you think that would worry me? If you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. What are you worried about? The dick size? Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time. Until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. 
you should try another job. That was your decision to say, but I don't judge you. I'm not gonna judge you. I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Are you sure about that? Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Hmm. Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends on the price of your medicine. I am shocked that you would think I am that sort of man. Forgive my suspicion. I'm so used to liars with good manners. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Okay, anything else? No? Alright. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. You again. Oh, he says, you again. What do you want this time? No. No. Goodbye. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus. You? Sir, Joe was a friend of yours. Joe Peterson, he's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I've known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then, but these days, he's just another thug. What is Joe's story? What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a Decent boxer, good one even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. It's never easy to find a new path in life. Especially after the loss of a loved one. But crime is certainly not the best option. We've all had some rough times, ain't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody will be fool enough to stand against the wet boot boy. I think that's it. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. Out of one way or another. You're late. Where's my money? Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again? Go away. Mesmerize, level two required. Crap. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see, Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. Darius, serious. It's serious. An anti figure of the Varcolacus. Pretty sure I butchered that name really hard. I apologize for that. It's locked, all right. A safe. 
Large box of pills. Pills here. Grabbing pills. He's got bronchitis. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. Ah. Ooh, you got bronchitis. And I got bronchitis. But seriously, you need to treat that. Do you need some help, Mr. Petrescu? I am very tired, but that is all. I don't need you, doctor. Give medicine. Well, I think you do. Take this, and you'll feel better. Free drugs from an English doctor. <laughs> it must be my lucky day. Your life in London. So Dorothy's real name is not Crane. Like myself and many people in this area. Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Who is she, really? Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family? Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man for sure, but a very poor writer. Da! Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough. And clever, too. If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Petrescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. Personal questions. Do you have any family left? Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. Damn. Don't be embarrassed, sir. If you must know, my own father disappeared many years ago, and I forgave him. It's quite awkward to talk about our families like this, but... Thank you, Dr. Reed. I appreciate your trust. Yeah, no problem. This war won't last forever. Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have taught strength and determination to my sons and daughters. I'm an old dying man, only has memories of better times to cherish. Hmm. How did you meet Nurse Crane? How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. Hmm. Tell me about your political past. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. But it's not the country I fought for. 
My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. And I still see a dark future ahead for my people. And you know what? You're right. The setting of this is 1910, right? You got World War One and World War Two ahead of you. So, yeah. At least you don't have to worry at least you don't have to worry about those two wars if you're dead right if you're about to die soon. Tell me more about Camilla. Tell me everything you know about Camellia. Oh Camellia. Good lord. Do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor. But Oh, we already heard this. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. I meant Camellia, not Camilla. What am I thinking? Find Dorothy Crane. Serious. Alright, Miss Dorothy, we need to talk for a while. This door has been unlocked, but I don't need to go out that way. Cool. All right, Dorothy Crane's just woof. A lot of sick people. Whole lot of sick people. Getting a lot of stuff from here. Oh! Letter to Nurse Crane. Okay. Okay. Dorothy, I'll help you in one He's moment. Oh! Oh god. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Raz Van Vassily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Where are the... Aspirin and salicin, you say? Why not some warm milk and a kiss on the cheek? Where are the quinine salts? Tried buying, borrowing, even stealing. There's none to be found, Doctor. He's not convulsing. He's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalpel! Hand me that scalpel! What can I do, Doctor? I must perform a... Yeah! I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. What do you suggest? Right then, Nurse Crane. What do you suggest we do? I have no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, doctor. Come on, stay alive, man. Stay alive. He's still bleeding, doctor. 
I'm losing his pulse. Damn. Rain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? I... I can't see. Oh, no. I must... First, suture the artery. Find the wound. The source of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! Cardiac massage, now. Cardiac... what? Are you making this up as you go along? We've lost the pulse. He... he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. to test my bedside manners. Sorry, man. I tried everything I could. Damn. Comfort door. Was there a way to save this man, or was... Do I owe this courtesy? Yeah, sorry, Dorothy. I tried. It's locked. This is an unfitting place for the illustrious Dr. Reed. You shouldn't be here. I'm going to comfort her. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? This is illegal. You can't carry on with this. I've come to stop the blackmail. I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. Why target Lady Ashberg? Why not trust Dr. The blackmail was But why Lady Ashbury? Why her, of all people? She's pristine and proper, all right. But that she-wolf in sheep's clothing murders the poor for sport. I have her where she belongs. And I'll milk her for all she's got. Dr. Swansea is a sensible and honest man. He wouldn't have refused your friend's care at Pembroke. It's easy for you to say, Doctor. These people cannot go to the police, nor to the hospital. They don't even speak English. They depend on me for everything. So, the end justifies the means. Is that your defense? I know you're kind, Doctor. Just another fine-heeled, silver-spooned gentleman who was given the world on a platter. You know nothing of poverty. Nothing of the shame, the hunger, the loneliness. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop Nurse Crane. So... Are you going to turn me over to the authorities? Oh! 
I will look. I will look away, but you resign. Embrace. I'm ending this right now. Charm. You will forget all about this. Listen very carefully, Dorothy. You will erase from your memory everything you pretend to know about Lady Ashbury and Pembroke Hospital. Let that rich bitch off the hook over my dead Nurse body. Nurse Crane, enough. Listen as if your life depended on every word. I know you have a generous heart who gives freely to those in need, but you shall walk away from the shadier streets of your business. I will never abandon- Dorothy, the discussion has come to a close. Your clandestine activities in the Resistance are over. Let it go. I'll... I'll let it go. Yes. All gone. Mesmerized level. New citizens available to kill. The district will soon suffer because of your consequence. Oh, I should have spared her. Crap. Oh, well. Part of her thing's freaking out. Oh, boy. I need to save my game, like now, because <laughs> a lot has happened. Dead inside. Oh boy. Is this the safe house or not? Not sure. Whitechapel, serious. This is not the safe house. Dead inside. Oh no, this is the hideout. Lots of recycling.
crap. That's enough. Alright, let me save my game. Alright, what to level up? Because I got tons of things to level up here. Tactical. Uh, no. Okay. The drain of your own blood to heal normal and aggravated damage instantly. Yes. Twelve. Okay. Alright, claws. Darn it. Don't have enough. Uh, is this rage? The abyss. Nice. Tactical. Shadow Veil. Drain your stamina to fade into the shadows and you become invisible to most enemies. Moving in this state will drain most of your stamina. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Your focus. You focus your power to boil your target's blood, causing it to violently explode, dealing damage to the target and anything nearby. Nice. But it sounds like a. It sounds like I need more health, right? More health or more stamina? I think more stamina. Yeah, that sounds good. Confirm. The following night. Alright, what happens now? Disappearances in Whitechapel. Reports of mysterious disappearance have escalated in the past weeks. At a recent point where witnesses have the uh, before recount their testimonies to an officer. Although this phenomenon appears to have a nationwide occurrences, the statements of the last 24 hours have converged into a singular country. Whitechapel, London. Yes, once more, this place. Eh, struggles. Alright. Major event. Okay. There's still some people here. Okay. I didn't even get to read the rest of the thing, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Healthy, healthy. She's missing. Oh, boy. Hope I didn't mess her up. All I did was tell her to not work for the pe Maybe I should have... Maybe I should have let her... God. Okay. All right. This is going to be a very long video, so I'm going to have to end my video here. If you like this video, please give this video a like, comment on this video on how the game so far. Subscribe to me to see more game videos like these. All right. This has been Gamer. Peace out. And I'll definitely see you on the next episode of Vampire. If you made it throughout this whole video, I salute to you. I clap my hands for you. I congratulate you because this was a very long video. Whew. Anywho, bye everyone, and I'll see you on the next episode of Vampire.